Hey, what's up everyone? It's Brian here from Exact IT Solutions bringing you another video in this month of Cyber Awareness Month, which is October. It's 2020. Today is October 12, 2020. Uh, we're going to bring we're going to walk through a few things today, a few uh, items that I want to highlight around cybersecurity. One of those is uh, this whole um, battle war that's going on right now with um, hackers, white hat hackers and black hat hackers, red team, blue team, however you want to look at it or call it. Um, it is very interesting um, and it looks like we have some developments here regarding that around the U.S. elections that I want to bring to everyone's attention. The other thing I want to kind of talk about today is the prevalence of uh, ransomware. The companies that are being uh, infected by these things are paying the ransom and I kind of want to show you the magnitude of that and what that is causing and then we're going to look at two interesting developments around um, ransomware and um, ways that companies are being attacked and, and things like that. So I, I want to get into that towards the end. A lot of this has to do with election type stuff. Um, which I told you I would bring you as we move closer to the election as part of cybersecurity awareness stuff because a lot of this stuff, while it affects businesses mostly because the hackers know that that's where the money's at, we're starting to see things at the consumer level that are that are a little interesting, intriguing, and worrisome all at the same time. So we're going to dive into that too. But before I get into any of that, uh, the only fee that we ask here uh, on this channel, if you like anything that you see, or that you're entertained in any way, shape, or form. If I have given you any knowledge or anything that you didn't know before you started watching my video, please hit the like button. And if you would, consider subscribing to our channel. It helps us out greatly, and it helps us uh, want to develop more content and want to do things uh, like put more videos out on YouTube every day during the month of October and things like that. Again, we don't get paid for this stuff. We put it out there because we think cybersecurity is really important. Uh, we want to get the word out. We want to make sure everybody's cyber aware and working together on the same team so we can uh, use these computers what they are meant to do, which was make money and make our lives better. Um, and unfortunately, some people take those powers and, and use them in their hands for no, none other than bad uh, destruction and, and criminal acts. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the content of the video. So the first thing we're going to look at here today is an uh, uh, interesting battle between the people that own the TrickBot bot network, network and the U.S. government and the people on the good side of the cybersecurity fight. Let's call them the blue team. Um, so... The blue team here is the U.S. Cyber Command. They are trying to shut down the TrickBot botnet. If you don't know what the TrickBot bot botnet is, um, it's an army of at least a at least a million hijacked computers run by Russian-speaking criminals, um, and uh, the the U.S. government um, tried to disable them. Um, my understanding is, is they basically just tried to dump a bunch of bad data into a database they use to compile information uh, about people so they can further attacks. Um, so the hackers basically have this huge database, this huge repository of information that they can tap into to try to figure out various things about the people that they're about to attack. Um, this goes from all the way just basic information that you can find on websites all the way to passwords you may have used in the past, usernames you may have used in the past, and things like that. So without getting into too much crazy detail about it, you get the gist of what that is. Um, and that's what these guys do. They use their database to further attack uh, uh, their targets. Um, and the U.S. government decided, that the military specifically, decided that they were going to go in, dump a bunch of data uh, on into this database to try to slow them down, especially moving towards the election. Um, based on what I'm reading, there is a significant concern that um, county and local uh, governments are going to be hit with massive amounts of ransomware 
right around election day. Um, not to so much, uh, the, the goal here is not so much to uh, get, get anybody or get any system to fail. What the whole goal here is, is to plant seeds in the American people's minds that their form of government and the form and the current way that they do things isn't so great. Um, and this goes back to, um, if you don't know anything about geopolitics and uh, the foundations of geopolitics, which is basically the Russian playbook uh, for doing this kind of st stuff, um, that's what is spelled out. It, the whole idea is to sow discord or to sow to sow doubt in the minds of Americans that their form of government and democracy um, has flaws and it's not as good as they think that it is. So um, this is just another a concern that is out there regarding this. And again, the threats that we're seeing are not anything specific, like we're gonna take down this system. Again, the whole goal of this is to sow doubt into the minds of Americans so that they think that the systems that they're under are not good enough um, and it sows doubt in what America stands for and democracy. Um, I don't wanna to get too political on this channel. I'm just spilling out the facts as I know them. Um, so I don't choose to pick sides on any of that. I'm just giving you the facts as they're laid out in the information that's in the book that I reference, plus what I see going on out there currently. Um, so basically, researchers uh, went through this um, uh, TrickBot network. There's a um, researcher, security researchers out there that um, will monitor what's going on with the TrickBot uh, group. And basically, what they're what they determined is that these uh, attempts by the U.S. military really didn't slow them down too much. It slowed them down a little bit but it didn't slow them down a ton to the point where it hampered their ability to do what they're trying to do. So that brings us to um, this article that I have from um, Microsoft uh, or from um, the Washington Post that details Microsoft. Microsoft went to court to ask if they could help disrupt this trick bot uh, network. Um, and they were granted, uh, I believe it was today, October 12th. Um, and it says that basically because the military couldn't do it with their tactics, Microsoft has now taken legal steps to dismantle one of the world's, world's largest botnets. An effort, it says, is aimed at warting criminal hackers who might seek to snarl up state and local computer systems used to maintain voter rolls or report election results company obtained an order from a federal judge in the Eastern District of Virginia last week that gave Microsoft control of the TrickBot, uh, that gave Microsoft control of TrickBot Botnet, a global network it described as the largest in the world. The company wants to disrupt hackers' ability to operate with the election barely three weeks away. Um, Russian, uh, uh, run by Russian-speaking criminals, the Botnet poses a theoretical but real threat to the election integrity by launching ransomware attacks in which data is rendered inaccessible unless the victim pays a ransom. Um, what basically Microsoft wants to do here is they want to be able to take control of US-based domains that they know TrickBot uses to gain access to computers here in the United States. Um, if you do cybersecurity really well, there's things you can do around identifying computers um, that are not in the United States and maybe blocking access to them. That's one strategy you could uh, deploy. Um, but it, criminals know how to get around that. You set up VPN servers and then you tunnel in or you basically make it look like you're, you're accessing a certain uh, network from a computer within the confines of the United States borders um, by using a VPN. But this allows somebody in Russia to then use a VPN server here in the United States and then that computer looks like it's in the United States. And it looks to me like Microsoft wants to be able to take these down, um, you know, and now they do have the legal authorization to do so. Um, so this is just another step to try to shut these guys down and it's interesting because 
when you monitor the dark web and you monitor the forums that these Russian speaking uh, criminals hang out on, they actually know that this they're being targeted. They know that the government just um, filled up their database with all this data and they are literally having conversations on their channels about increasing the demand for ransomware payment as a um, retaliation move against what the US military and now Microsoft wants to do. Because um, you know the reality of it is Microsoft has skin in this game because a lot of these um, hacker hacking groups are able to do what they do because of flaws in Microsoft's software products. Um, and that's just the reality of what it is. But it's good to see Microsoft stepping in and taking a very large role um, in something like this. Um, but it's very serious. It's something that's going to you're going to hear more about in the more mainstream news as the election approaches that this is going on because of our military went to the extent of trying to fill a database um, that these guys use to further their attacks. You can pretty much bet that this is a very serious threat and they're seeing signs of something big coming heading towards the election and they want to try to stop it. I'm going to get into a little bit later in this video um, some of those more specific uh, specific um, uh, firewalls or, or network devices and how they're targeting and getting into these these things especially when it comes to um, local and state governments um, so switching gears a little bit um, I want to talk about just these these ransomware attacks in general and the ones that we've seen um, you know, recently in the last, I don't know, let's call it six months or so. Um, but you know, we have, we have Blackboard. Blackboard got hacked. And, and as I said before in, in, on this channel, um, and I, and I highlighted it with the universal healthcare services hack, these companies love to come out and say, Oh, no, no data was stolen. No personal data was stolen. Um, you know, especially while it's in the news. And this seems to be a tactic that occurs while things are fresh and in the news where companies want to come out and say, well, we, you know, they didn't steal any data. They didn't do anything of, of that sort. Um, and then they find out three or four months later that the opposite was true and that data was actually stolen and the, stolen. And the reality of it is, is that every attack we've seen in the last three to four months, data was stolen before the ransomware occurred. Um, hackers are getting into the networks, they're stealing the data, and then their last thing they do is deploy the ransomware. Um, so now they have basically what I call double extortion. Talked about it before. They have two ways to now get the ransom money that they're looking for from you after they've gotten into your network. Um, so bank account data was stolen um, along with other, other uh, data points of information. Um, so this week, Blackball confirmed in a regulatory filing that the stolen data also included bank account data and social security numbers, far more personally identifiable information than the company first thought. Um, and it said in most cases, fields intended with sensitive information were encrypted and not accessible, the company claimed. That's what it claimed, and it wasn't true. The, the data was in plain text, and the data was uh, in, is now in the hands of criminals and is probably being spread and sold and shared on the dark web. The other interesting thing I want to point out, and I'm going to talk about it in these other three more incidents that I'm going to go through very quickly here, but in July, it paid the ransom. So it, it's it basically, here you are, that they've paid the ransom. They don't say exactly how much it was, um, but we know it, it's, it's crazy um, that you know hackers are spending four million dollars on scammy ads run on Facebook um, you know that they can pay four million dollars uh, to Facebook for ads to try to infect more people um, and then they spend a, a million dollars trying to recruit more hackers they have tons of money at their disposal because corporate America does not do cybersecurity well enough and they think that paying the ransom is getting them out of trouble when it's not. It's making things worse long term for everybody, for everybody. Um, and any company that pays the ransom here on out, in my opinion, should be criminally charged. 
Um, either go out of business because you didn't do things good enough in the first place. Go out of business because you don't deserve to be in business if you're not taking care of this stuff. That's my opinion. Um, and go out of business and suffer the consequences or try to just deal with your company and deal with things the best you can um, instead of paying the ransom. If you have to pay the ransom to get out of this, you're making it worse for not only private industry, you're making it worse for your government, your, your state and local and city and federal government, and quite frankly, your country and the citizens within your country. You're making it worse for everybody because now you're putting massive amounts of cash and resources into the hands of criminals. Would you walk down to your, would you walk down the street or would you hand somebody, hand a criminal, uh, you know, a million dollars because they just broke into your neighbor's house? That's essentially what you're doing, and it's absurd to me that this is going on. So we look at Tyler Technologies, the big technology firm that does cybersecurity for state and local governments. They were hammered, and then they paid the ransom. They got hammered, and they paid the ransom. So here's another company who paid the ransom, an undisclosed amount. It's going to be in the millions, folks. If anyone believes it, that these hackers are going anywhere from six, seven, eight million demands down to hundreds of thousands, you're kidding yourself. These companies are paying out millions of dollars to get out of these jams that they put themselves in. And Tyler Technologies is another example of a company that paid the ransom to get out of the problem that they have. Moving on, we have another company. Software AG hit with $23 million ransom demand. This was uh, over the weekend, this weekend with, um, with uh, in, in, over in Germany, it's a major software company, um, and it's become the latest victim of a ransomware attack after having after having a number of its files encrypted and stolen. The company was hit by ransomware known as Clop. The hackers accessed uh, a software AG internal network before encrypting and copying the files. Again, double extortion. The affected files are so far revealed to include employee passport and ID scans, employee emails, financial documents, and directories from the company's network. Um, they are going to end up paying the ransom here because the data was stolen. And I don't know if this report goes in to say that they did. Um, the breach took place over the week of October 3rd, so we're talking about over a week ago. Um, the company revealed the hack on October 5th when it said its internal network was disrupted and the hackers wanted 23 million for the decryption key. Um, while there is usually a major difference between the ransom demand and the actual amount paid and a lack of reliable information on the subject, this is one of the largest ransom demands ever made. And we're going to see ransom demands continue to rise based on what we're seeing out there on the criminal side of the internet. They are not kidding and they are not backing down and they are not taking uh, a low number for an answer quite frankly um, a big one that I talked about a few times in the videos universal healthcare services they restored their IT services uh, with to their company um, but they I believe somewhere in here I have that they paid the ransom um, oh no I'm sorry it does not say that but it does say a week after being hit with a massive cyber attack US uh, universal Healthcare Services said Monday that it has restored its corporate data centers. The, the health system also said connectivity has been reestablished for all U.S.-based inpatient facilities. And then UHS, UHS did not specify in its update whether it had paid any ransom to the hackers. I'm going to say that they probably did. Um, it doesn't say whether they did or didn't, but... I would firmly believe that if they did not pay it, they would be boastful and come out and say they didn't pay it. My guess is, is that they paid it so they could get back to moving to normal operations. And that's one heck of a de decision. I don't envy anyone at, at UHS management who had to make the decision to pay a ransom versus getting life-saving hospital services back up and running. And, you know, let's hope that our law enforcement people can track down whoever did this uh, and make sure that justice is done um, because this is completely ridiculous but um, you know I don't blame any of these companies for paying the ransom quite frankly um, but the practice has to stop and we have to do better with cybersecurity than you know paying the ransom 
you're giving way too much money and too many resources to these to these criminal entities who are making a fortune with very low overhead off companies uh, inability to secure their systems properly um, and we see it time and time again that people think oh we got hit by some genius we got hit by somebody who did something that we never knew before BS that's bullshit you you we know about this stuff we know how networks get attacked it's either lack of lack of experience lack of knowledge or just complete incompetence on, on the people who are in charge if something like this does go down in your organization uh, so moving on, uh, we had a school hit today. I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. Uh, or no, uh, a city, it's uh, Mount Pleasant in Michigan. The city of Mount Pleasant uh, identified a remote ransomware attack on its uh, computer and phone systems. Uh, happened on Saturday morning, which is now an earmark of, of these hackers. They like to hit you on the weekend or at night when you're not in the office. Um, uh, it, it, Michigan State Police is investigating. Uh, of course, they say no personal information was believed to have been breached at this time, but we're going to find out in a couple of months that it was. Um, and I just wanted to bring it to your attention because it's the city of Mount Pleasant in Michigan. So if you're a resident of Michigan or you live in Mount Pleasant, your city is, uh, government is under attack, your systems are down. Uh, and this is just another example of a city or local government getting attacked. Um, and there's a huge concern, are they doing enough to protect the election system? Uh, because your county governments are usually in charge of the election system. So, um, you know, it brings up a lot of concern. Uh, we also have a new Android malware, Malwalker B. It triggers when, it, when you press the home key. So businesses are usually the target, but here we go. Um, imagine if you hit your home key on your phone and your phone was locked and you were being asked for a ransom uh, to unlock that phone. Not good. Um, you know, it, they're coming after everybody. Nobody's safe. Um, you can put uh, antivirus malware endpoint protection on your phones. Uh, I recommend uh, a Bitdefender. Um, they have a really good mobile product that works really well. I would put that on my phone and make sure it scans my phone at least daily uh, for anything like this. But there, are, there is malware or um, ransomware for Android phones that is out there uh, wire, wildly in, in, the, in the interwebs. Um, and Microsoft has recently uh, came out with uh, more detail on this malocker B in a recent post that they think, uh, recent post that they did, um, and it, it will make your phone useless uh, until you make a payment. So um, it, it really it, it's staying under the radar right now, but I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. It's out there. We're probably going to be telling you more about this kind of stuff in the future, but you know, take a look. Uh, and the last one I'm going to go into is uh, an article that was just released, I believe it was today, um, by ZDNet. Uh, ZDNet is um, uh, reporting here that hacker group uh, groups chain VPN and Windows bug to attack U.S. government networks. And basically what this article goes in to say is that hackers use... A combination of a VPN vulnerability that's well known and a Windows vulnerability that's well known um, and they use those two to get into government networks specifically local and state government networks and specifically the two vulnerabilities that they're using are a known Fortinet VPN vulnerability that allows an attacker to gain access to a Fortinet VPN system so if you use fortinet vpn please make sure that your fortinet vpn appliances are fully up to date and patched because there are known vulnerabilities around those systems that hackers can exploit to then gain access to the network once they have access to that then they can move laterally from that point to your active directory server by using the recently disclosed net log on zero vulnerability that Microsoft disclosed in their Active Directory. It allows them to 
get complete admin level access to your Active Directory without any valid credentials whatsoever. Once they have access to that, they can do whatever they want, like create their own usernames and passwords for themselves to use across your network. And that is how these hackers are penetrating local governments. And it's, uh, I don't know that this to be fact, but it seems based on my conversations with people out there that Fortinet is a very popular product for state and local governments to use for various networking appliances. Have you be it a firewall, a DDoS appliance, or something like this, a VPN appliance. And they use those, and then they obviously have a Windows network inside of that uh, domain, which typically has an active directory on it. And then that's how these attacks go down. So if your county government um, has a, v a Fortinet VPN that is not patched and has a Windows server that is not patched, it's very possible hackers have control of your county government's election system and everything that they do around elections that are coming up this November, among other things. This is also a very easy way for uh, hackers to deploy ransomware like they did over at Mount Pleasant. So, um, you know, this stuff's really important. Make sure that you guys are, are out there who are responsible with this stuff or checking for vulnerabilities all the time, patching your systems, keeping everything up to date, keeping the firmware up to date. Um, and if you do all these things and you follow a cybersecurity framework like NIST, um, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna get through, If even if they can get through, if you do all these things, you're gonna be able to recover. Um, and that's the importance of following a cybersecurity framework. And if you don't have any idea what a cybersecurity framework is, head over to our website at xitx.com, hit the contact us button, right in the little box that you have no idea what a cybersecurity framework is. And we'll have somebody reach out and help you understand what a cybersecurity framework is in your business. And this is only for business clients, so don't go to the floor and filling it out just for yourself. Personal individuals don't need a cybersecurity framework, but businesses do, and it's a must. Um, so I'm gonna wrap it up. If you liked anything you saw in this video, please hit the like button below. Uh, please subscribe to our channel if you're so inclined. If you made it this far in my video, why aren't you subscribed? Um, so you're 27 minutes, almost 27 and a half minutes in. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you're not subscribed and until only 1% of the people who watch my channel are actually subscribed to my channel so come on hit that subscribe button um, and don't forget we're giving away that $200 Amazon gift card to anybody who subscribed to our channel as of October 30th we will announce that winner on our channel on November 1st 2020 so enter for cybersecurity awareness month free $200 Amazon gift card and I thank you for watching my video. I hope you tune in to some more uh, in the future. And we will be looking to release uh, a bunch of videos all this week about Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And uh, we will all see you soon. Check out our website, xitx.com.